What is up, guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to another course of Vela Pokemon League Battle versus Matt and Joey, or the Quebec Bitix versus the Los Angeles New Kings. Now, it should have been said here, Matt is a part of my team in the VPL, so he is actually the only remaining undefeated player left. Which makes this a very interesting matchup, because Yoey is one of the few players that I do believe are very, very capable of actually building on points, making him one of the tougher ones to deal with. Uh, I'm facing him myself, actually, upcoming weeks, and um, do not look forward to it. And it is because I know how he plays, I know how well he can play. Uh, Matt definitely knows this with this in mind, and... Uh, Matt's team here is actually a very interesting one. We have Electrode, uh, which is definitely on the radar in the league concept overall due to its extra speed being able to focus on special attack with Modest if you want to capitalize on that. We have Mammoth Mine, Slowbro, Scissor, which I do believe is a mega form. Uh, we have Volcanion and Crobat. And we're going up against Yoey's team here with Bazimian, Gudra, Snorlax, Togekiss, Manaphy, and Heatran. So without further ado, I guess we just should go into the match. So, blip. There we go. Loading time. How is the loading time on a cartridge here? Well, you know, whatever. So Joey's avatar looks really, really menacing, doesn't it? As, um, let's see, it's going to send out the Bazimian. Bazimian most likely Scarf, um, usually are that. That's the best way of using it, really. As we see, the, um, <laughs> the Electrode comes in. Um, or the Ron Tognut. As he's going to withdraw the monkey, so probably not Scarf then. As, um... It switches in the Heatran, and we see Volt Switch on uh, Matt's side here, and it doesn't do necessarily all that much, but at the same time, you know, it does the damage, and that's what you want, as Marion comes in, and that is a Volcanion. Now, these two against one another is very interesting, though. Both get access to, um, I believe, Earth Power, so Heatran definitely is in the worst position between the two, and yo of course, acknowledging this and switches out to Valu. That is the Gudra. Alright, alright, I like this. I like this. Gudra is a special defensive beast, and that could very well be a Solvest. That could very well be a Solvest from the get go. As he's gonna switch out the Volcano and go to Joe Sekik. I, I have no idea what that is. As we see Dragon Pool, so more special oriented here. Uh, could do a decent chunk of Mammoth Swine, even though it is a neutral hit. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that, that's decent. As he's going to switch out Baloo, not wanting to take a possible Icicle Crash, and goes directly to Manaphy Sora. Now, Manaphy is a dangerous threat in League concept with, you know, the Sea Rain and whatnot. And just the roll tail low and stuff like that are something nobody wants to prep for. So we see Life Orb damage here on Mammoth Swine, so that's good for Joe, Joey to know. Uh, we see Leftovers here on Manaphy, so it's definitely not Sea Rain. It's definitely not Sea Rain. Um... Or any type of C move, really, as he's gonna switch up Marion yet again. Uh, Volcania probably to some extent shake this Pokemon, but at the same time, not because Energy Ball still does fair damage, but it could still go for Tilglow. Um, and I'm not sure whether or not Volcania can do any heavy hits on it outside of High Eden Power Electric. Um, so we see Call Mind. Oh, this is this could be worse, though. This could be worse. Definitely shaking. Uh, Volcano on the special offensive side could be very dangerous indeed, as we see Steam Eruption. And, and that's not going to do a whole lot. Um, the only thing it can possibly get is a Rosilla Damage with Burn, so uh, we don't get it. I, I kind of heightened my voice to the Burn, hoping for it. I'm sorry to say it, but you know, always Scald and Steam Eruption. You see you see the, the, those attacks, you kind of like, boom, Burn. So we see another call in mind here. This is definitely a, a time to panic from Matt's side, I believe. He still has Pokemon that does outspeed it. So Manaphy might not be. Oh, we see haste. Oh. 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 So we, we. Oh, that's tough. That is tough. Does this mean. Yeah, this is definitely a dead matchup, isn't it? They can't hurt each other at all. This is. Alright. Um. It's Ron Togat come in, the, the Electrode, uh, as we're going to see Energy Ball yet again. Uh, I don't, I believe uh, Energy Ball and Skull could KO, but this looks to be a bulkier Electrode. This definitely looks to be a bulkier type of Electrode. And, and this could actually work, this could actually work really well. Uh, mainly because of, um, I do believe it can Thunder Spam rather nicely here, as Heatron again comes in, and we see Volt Switch, right? Pivoting yet again, and... Um, 
Well, I do believe Volcano is the switching. Both teams have failed so far to get up self-rocks. I really want to encourage or talk about that. Uh, they both kind of need it, and probably Joey more than Matt, but they both have failed at actually getting those, rocks, those up, and it could be very, very devastating for the both of them, as um, he's going to switch out, of course, to Sora. Um, went yet again for an Icicle Crash. Like I said, they're really surprised we don't see any Stealth Rocks damage, anything like that, to punish their switches, because they are playing the defensive game. They're both are playing the defensive game. So, like I said, very surprised that none of them are responding accordingly. As I take a sip of my coffee, hey. Mm -mm -mm. Alright, gonna switch out back again to the Volcanion. Um, as was the energy ball, like, this is, this is a dead matchup for the both of them. Um, I definitely believe Volcanion's part here could be very important, because that is probably the only Mon that stands between Manaphy possibly able to set up. But of course, with um, the lack of, um, or what do you call it, um, the lack of the um, Tail Glow, um, Manaphy does not get as scary. Uh, Coalmine, while a very, very good check overall defensively towards Volcanion didn't pan out due to haste but had it been nasty blood it would have been a much much dangerous mod overall as we see Valu coming in at Dulia Zagudra yeah there is as another earth power I already know this one is assault vessel it's gonna chew any hit that comes his way that's very intimidating indeed actually as it's gonna switch out to Volcanion probably suspecting i would have suspect an earthquake from this point i definitely would have suspect that as we see dragon pulls slow bro if it is a salt vest could chew this hit really nicely but has to watch out for thunderbolt and that is not that is not a salt vest so the bigger question is whether or not a thunderbolt is followed i definitely would not have stayed in here here comes a thunderbolt oh can he chew it oh but barely barely oh and i get the thunder wave that's um that's unfortunate. <laughs> so right, so it's, I do believe there's a time to uh, play with Regenerator, I'm sure. Um, the thing is here, Gudram being paralyzed might actually not be... It's not the worst thing in the world. As we're going to see in Peter comes in, the scissor, right? And here it comes the Drake, oh! Alright. So now it definitely needs to switch out, because the scissor can probably shoot one of these rather nicely. It still does damage, like I won't deny that fact, but he definitely gonna go for that um, uh, for that U-turn now. That's definitely a key here. As Don Don Goo comes in the heat run. Um, and of course, Mega Evolution, I, I forgot about that. Now, it would be nice if he went for Superpower, but I find that highly unlikely. But this is definitely an opening that he has been longing for for quite some time, and we're not going to see that yet. Till this point, they're both actually on par with one another, really not denting anything anywhere, and I'm, I'm kind of liking that. I do believe Joey is on a small advantage as of, this, as of now, as we see, of course, the leftovers yet again. And uh, since we've seen the leftovers, we've stated here, we know that Heatran is not faster than Mammoth Swine, so Earthquake is going to be a possible KO. As he does stay in, he's going to lose Heatran here. That was a tough play. Probably better sacking off the Gudra. Uh, but yet, then again, what did Heatran do for this wife of Bell? Not necessarily all that much. So it's a fair sack, even though it's an unfortunate one. As we see Sora coming in again, um, I mean, what do you do? You prep for Volcanion, right? So you're going to go for a Call Mine, I believe, and then spamming Energy Ball as Run Tognat comes in. And uh, yeah, that's um, that's far worse. And this electrode chewing hits. <laughs> this electrode is something else. This electrode is definitely something else. As he can freely again go for a Volt Switch here because he has no way of actually stopping it. As Valu the Gudra, I do believe, comes in. And um, while he can choke it um, or chew it, he definitely can't take the matchup that's going to be follow and that's going to be Mammoth Swine. And I think if I were um, if I were Matt now, I'd probably start going for Earthquake over Isolate Crash, knowing that he would sack it uh, or not sack it and definitely go for something else. And we see the Great Fairy. And uh, he went for Icicle Crash, so clearly Matt is a better player than I am, as this is definitely going to hurt. Ooh, ooh, 
dude. That is that is tough. That is tough indeed. That's right. He has one big hit left in him. As we're gonna see, monkey, the um, Pizimian. And as there, there, this these Pokémon usually are scarfed. So he goes for Ice Head, just getting the Resil damage. That's always pleasant, and uh, he dies to Life Orb too. So Pizimian get a kill here due to being active on the field. But yeah, that's that's tough. As we see, U-turn. Um, question is whether or not he's locked into that U-turn. As we're gonna see, Foppa, the Crobat, and uh, he's gonna withdraw the monkey. Um, I wonder, he might actually not be scarfed. The more I think about it, as we see, Sora comes in, the Manaphy, and uh, I wonder, the opening should be coming now because the switching on Yoi's side seems to be worse and worse as the time goes. But we also can state here that Brave Bird did a lot of damage, but it is not enough since Manaphy's left or is going to push it over the edge, making it not a KO with the next Brave Bird. It is whether or not it's worth risking. Um, and Matt is not going to do that, he's going to go for U-turn. So, my best guess here is the Nice Beam is going to come through here. And uh, Marion is going to come in from Matt's side B and of course the Volcanion. And we see Ice Beam, yeah, right, that's that's great. I do believe that's an ideal play. But of course, this Beast of Amon do chew it quite nicely. Um, I don't know, Volcanion all of a sudden turned out to be one of the more ferocious beans on the field to be completely honest. We're gonna see energy ball here. We are definitely sack playing Manaphy at this point as Earth Power might not KO so the followed energy ball might push it over the edge but one really stupid said that Manaphy is dead by default due to those extra seal damage onto it really early on in the game. Manaphy really has been chewing hit but haven't getting the opening it possibly needed which has been really really tough on it as Ruck Tugnut comes in and I'm pretty sure it's going to see an energy ball and it's going to chew it. It's going to shoot really well. And I only can state this yet again. What is Electrode? What is it? Why, why does it work? Why does it not die? I mean, this is, this is something else. As we see the Volt switch again, of course. And that's going to KO. Yes. The Asia Ball moving really slow there. One might never know. As um, it's looking tougher for Joey than it looks for Matt. But remember this, guys. We have a lot of turns left as Peter comes in and we're going to see Monkey, the Bazimian, and um, I mean there is no ramification of him actually going for close combat straight on at it. While Crobat is an option, it still it still would do decent damage I'm sure. Um, as we see close combat directly, now did I lie? I did. But this, this feels banded. This feels banded. This feels really, really banded. Really, really bad. <laughs> but I, I do think that did good damage, to be honest. I mean, it's more a defensive Crobat, so this, this is interesting. As uh, so you gonna send in Gluttony to Snorlax. Right, you remember Snorlax? I sure as hell didn't. Totally forgot about him. So the, the game is far from over once the Snorlax is still on the field. I mean, the game is not over. It is basically five months in the Snorlax, and I mean, Snorlax is basically six months in his own. As Braver does a very fair amount of damage, to be completely fair here. But um, we still don't know what, what type of Snorlax this could be. Um, and what responses Matt could have for a Snorlax. If any. As we're going to see Marion come back again. And uh, it's a sack play at best. As we see, see something. What is this? I'm actually... look, look How does a mad Snorlax look? Something like that, right? It definitely looked more pissed than your your, your standard uh, variant. As we all see, belly drum. All right, all right. This is this is something else. Oh, but the <laughs> oh oh, this is so unfortunate. This is so unfortunate. Oh God, I was like, oh, belly drum. That all right, haze. Oh dear lord. I really feel for I really feel for Joey right now. As uh, Peter the um, scissor comes in. He could possibly go for superpower. Yeah, it's gonna break it, I'm sure. Oh dear lord. I was I was actually getting hyped and then you know nope. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> so monkey comes in again. Now 
is where or not he should overpredict or not go for possible stone edge on the on you know the crowbat. I think it's time to make that play as Foppa comes in back again and uh, yeah, rock slide. All right, there we go. There we go. This should hurt. All right. So crowbat is out. This now this makes Pesimian a lot more ferocious. Now we can spam close combat without any ramification as Adam Foot comes in. Or there are ramifications with slow row, clearly. Uh, I, I lied. As uh, he switches out, go back to Valu. Be the paralyzed Gudra. And um, has slack off. Alright. So I guess to some extent here, the best series of play here is just get as much residual damage as possible with Gudra here. To break down Slowbro if possible, as it is fully paralyzed here, which is, is unfortunate. Ice Cream is definitely going to do a decent chunk, even if it is Assault Vest, it still does something. Uh, yeah, but it didn't do anything, did it? Wow, that he actually chew it. As Thunderbolt here is a 2 it kill, I'm sure. Um, it's close to, I do believe it put it put it in range, but Leftovers will save it from it. And since it doesn't need to worry about, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, being fully paralyzed, he can actually slack off the follow turn, waiting for it to be fully paralyzed. So, um, Baloo goes to Thunderbolt again. It needs to break through. Um, it doesn't get it, as we're going to see slack off. I do believe the reason is there is a lot of turns left is because of this situation. There is really no one of them that do anything to no one. So, with that in mind, this could be definitely a matchup that I do think are kind of tough for the both of them. As um, it's gonna keep going for Thunderbolt. I mean, what else could one do? Um, it is definitely up there, though. Uh, like, as I see, as the roll do just slightly under those 50% uh, with leftovers in mind. So, real unfortunate we don't lose the item. Now, I guess it should be stated here that I do believe both of these teams both have a longer match due to early against status enough that none of them have rocks or hazards on the field. I do believe it punished them both very, very well throughout this matchup. And this is why it is such a long game in the end, because none of them really, well, survived. The only thing they do is survive in the matchup that are transpiring. And uh, whether or not that's a good or bad thing is up to you guys. But quite frankly, I do believe had Joey had stealth rocks and punished Matt here early in the game that he would have been have a much easier time than he ended up having. This is a matchup made in hell where no one of them really does anything to one another. As uh, Rug Tognat gonna comes in, he's definitely gonna survive a Thunderbolt, I'm sure. Um, there we go. So finally, a possible shift in momentum. It is whether or not. Um, oh, it is. It is C move. It is an electric sea move electrode. Look! Look at those eyes! Look at... <laughs> that is a pissed off electrode. <laughs> what the hell did I just see? <laughs> so anyway, that's gonna KO, clearly. <laughs> oh, dear lord. It didn't KO either! No! <laughs> Electrode, no! <laughs> it, it barely lived. Alright, alright, alright. So Peter comes in. Wow, now I'm disappointed. Now I'm very disappointed. As uh, he's probably going to send in Monkey and uh, trying to soak the possible bullet punch here. Um, or, or he will soak it, I'm sure. Uh, the question is no, no, he, he did not soak that. Um, so right, it is a wrap up here. I do believe uh, Matt wins here 2-0, which is yeah, which is fair. Electrode really, really put in the work. So too bad it didn't put in enough work. <laughs> oh my god, that's so going to, to the thumbnail. What what the hell was that? Uh, but yeah, anyway, like I said, a um, quick rundown about this team. I would definitely say, as stated here, not getting rocks on the field is what makes this game so long. And also makes it tougher for the both of them because both were to some extent weak to receive the damage since the both responses to the both of their team was switching out and defensively shake one another. This is a situation you want rocks. You really, really, if you're acknowledging that your opponent is switching rather than attacking, then hazard is your option. 
And I do believe both of them actually acknowledge in this, but fail to pull that off. I don't know whether or not Mammoth Swine had rocks. I don't know if Heatron had rocks. Either way, they missed out on doing this. And this is something that I do believe punished them a bit too much throughout the Wi-Fi battle. And quite honestly, they desperately needed it. So Matt winning here 2-0, I believe is a very fair win. But at the same time, like I said here, it was all about the defensive shaking and Electrode. Electrode was clearly a, clearly a mon of a choice in this game. But yeah, overall, I like this wi for battle. And also, thank you to both of you guys for, of course, having this game. Good job on you both. And yeah, to everybody else, thank you, of course, as always, for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.